so we were discussing about uh, the, the last discussion we had we were discussing about uh, the relief that is uh, the rollover relief we had a discussion about rollover relief last time so let's talk about few more stuff regarding the uh, capital gain tax treatment So today we'll discuss something about uh, shares, the merger and acquisitions. First of all, as far as the shares and securities are concerned, if you sell any shares and securities that create some capital gain or gain on which capital gain tax is payable. But there are few shares and securities which are exempt. So those you should remember that those securities are exempt, such as the government securities, the guilds, the treasury stocks. Similarly, the qualifying corporate bonds, the corporate bonds that has been issued by the corporation, which are non-convertible bond. These are exempt. Similarly, if you have shares held in individual saving account, remember that from individual saving account, the interest and dividend is also not taxable. Now, important thing is that when we try to calculate the disposal of the shares so we have to apply the valuation rule we have to value the shares so what is the valuation rule for shares now i am talking about the valuation rule with respect to cgt there is a different valuation rule as uh, related to the inheritance tax as well so both are different so if there is a uh, sale of shares to an unconnected party to any unconnected party then obviously whatever proceed you are receiving from the shares you will use that particular proceed but if there is kind of uh, like um, gift of shares or transfer to a connected parties, then market value must be used. So if it is related with uh, like uh, gift of shares or to a connected party, then we need the market value, then market value is needed. Now, how will identify market value? So in case of the quoted shares, those are listed in stock exchange, for quoted shares will identify the value as this is the formula that we need to use is mid price on stock exchange and what is mid price mid price is basically the average of lowest and highest price average of lowest and the highest price of the day suppose if the highest price is uh, like uh, hmm, lowest is 230p and highest is 270p so we'll take the average value that is 230 plus 270 divided by 2 so this is the per share value that is 250p is the value that will be used in the calculation of shares now as far as the unquoted shares are concerned if the shares are not listed to on any stock exchange and we don't have any value related to that then what to do then this will be given in the exam so you will you will be provided with the market value you don't need to calculate market value against this now, important thing is that if you have shares of uh, a company which you have purchased uh, like many times 
and uh, then you want to sell from these shares then what to do suppose i have uh, let's see i have uh, purchased 500 shares of abc at the cost of 2000 pound then i have purchased like uh, uh, 600 shares the same abc company at a price of 4000 pound and subsequently disposed of 300 shares at price of 5000 now question is that if i need to calculate gain then sale proceed is given 5000 but what is the cost of 300 shares which shares i have sold out of 500 or 600 so for that pro particular problem that uh, how to relate these 300 shares we need to learn the shares identification rule so for the individual point of view the shares identification rule is that you need to identify the same day purchase you have to match the disposal with the same day purchase first from same day purchase then following 30 days and if there are more than one acquisition then use the first in first out order and if there is no same day purchase or no following 30 days then we can use or match with the share pool a pool is needed and we have to match with the share pool like for example say suppose uh, the date is 1st january 20 and this is uh, like 30th september 20 and disposal is uh, 30th november 20 now see the disposal date is 30th november 20 so there is no same day purchase there is no following 30 days purchase so we need to construct a pool and from the above data how pool can be constructed for share pool following columns will use first of all is number of shares and then the cost of share so whatever is the whatever is the value that is 500 shares will transfer this to pool 500 shares worth 2000 and 600 shares worth 4000 in this way we have 1100 shares and this worth 6000 so if you want to sell shares like for example we have 300 shares disposal so we'll deduct the cost of these shares from this figure that 300 shares has been disposed of and the remaining is the carried forward value and what is the cost of these 300 shares or we can calculate so the cost of 1100 share is 6000 so per share cost and you can multiply with 300 and you will get the figure of 300 shares let me calculate what is the figure so it's uh, it's 6000 and uh, need to multiply by 300 and this is 1636 so the value left over is 6000 minus 1636 so it's 4364 so in this way i have identified the cost of the asset shares disposed of now we have sale proceed of 300 shares at a price of 5000 and what is the cost 
which we have identified above 1636 so there is a gain which is 5000 minus 1636 that is chargeable gain of 3364 so this is what the identification rule now sometime it happens that when you purchase shares so you might get some bonus shares or right shares so in case of bonus shares if you have a bonus shares in between the so bonus is always part of pool they so transfer the bonus shares irrespective of the date in the pool and it will affect the number of shares column but as bonus shares are free so no impact on cost column just one sided effect and similarly in case of uh, right issue So, in case of right issue, wait a minute. So, in case of right issue, right issue is not free. So, in case of right issue, we get the number of shares as well as some cost associated with the shares so in case of right shares right shares are all always part of pool irrespective of the date of purchase so the impact is on number of shares as well as the impact on cost of the shares so both will be affected so in case of the identification rule we have to be careful about whether there is any bonus shares or right shares like that. Now, as far as the reorganization and takeover is concerned, sometimes it happens that if you have shares of any company and that company has been taken over by another company, then you get some more shares as a result of your existing shares. So in the case of takeover, you, you might get some like uh, cash consideration from the target company. You might get some new shares. You might get some loan is now question is that whether the acquisition results in any disposal or is just as as an exchange of shares with the existing shares so the thing is that in case of uh, like uh, share exchange when you are getting shares against the existing holding so the rule is that uh, if there is a hundred percent share exchange, so it's a kind of paper to paper transaction. So means there is no gain, no loss is to be calculated. So no CGT at the time of takeover and reorganization. And the new shares cost is the same as old shares cost is the substitute of the old shares 
but sometimes it happens that the shareholder receive one or more types of shares against the exchange so if suppose i have like uh, ordinary shares suppose i have 5000 ordinary shares of xyz plc and the xyz plc was taken over by another company and as a result i am getting the ordinary shares same ordinary shares of 5000 of qpc plc as well as some preference shares suppose 3000 preference shares now in that case the previous cost is need to be apportioned with respect to the market value of the replacement shares so apportionment is needed now and apportionment is needed and through apportionment we will identify the cost of each new shares and now sometime it happens that then we have a mix of consideration if we have a mix of consideration suppose what would be the example of mix consideration that we are we received some cash consideration and some shares then against that cash consideration it is a kind of uh, like uh, uh, there is a disposal and uh, against the share there is no disposal so suppose mix consideration we have both cash as well as shares so first of all we have to see that uh, whether the cash element is small or not so the cash element might be a small one or it might be not a small what is the what is the treatment if it is small and what is the treatment if it is not small so if it is small then no cgt consequences there is no cgt consequences on that and whatever is the proceed that we have received is deducted from the acquisition cost so deducted from the acquisition cost but as if the consideration is not small then gain on cash consideration when we we have this gain, gain consideration and we can get this and disposal is needed so therefore this is treated as a part disposal then we will we will treat this as part disposal now question is that we have already cost of shares then we need to we need to split the cost of existing shares against the cash element and against the other consideration so we need to learn the formula that uh, cost of original shares is to be apportioned as per the cash component cash received divided by cash plus market value of shares the total proceed so we need to use that moving forward so it means that first we have to identify whether the cash consideration is small or not and how we can identify the small consideration what is the definition of 
small consideration where the cash element is either number one which is less than equal to 5% of total value so it is considered as insignificant or and equal to 3000 pound if i so if it is either the definition is that either less than equal to 5% of total value is cash or it's less than equal to 3000 now suppose let's see for example suppose abc hold 10000 shares of xyz bought already at 20000 price now there is a takeover and as a result of that takeover now the shares received in another company is 20000 against 10000 and uh, cash received is uh, 5000 the total consideration is total consideration we have to calculate for which market value of each share given as 1.25 so the market value of shares it's one consideration which is 20000 multiplied by 1.25 it's going to be 25000 and cash consideration which is 5000 so total value is 30000 now that becomes a fraction 25 out of 30 now see whether this cash 5000 is considered to be a small one so let's see let's calculate so cash received is 5000 now see whether it's a small one or not so first first one is it's less than equal to 5 percent of 30,000 is is it in my example it is uh, 30,000 multiplied by 5 percent so this is 1500 or the second definition is it's uh, Three thousand. So whichever is higher, so it's three thousand. So we receive five thousand, and five thousand is greater than higher of, which is three thousand. So it means that we have received cash amount and is not considered as a small one. So it is not considered as a small one then this cash component is generated as a disposal value. So how to calculate gain now? So the cash received is 5,000 and we have to deduct the cost of original shares attributed to this. And this is 20,000 was the original cost. Value of cash was 5,000 and total consideration was 30,000. So as a result, the fraction is 3333, three, 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 and we have a gain of 1667 against the peers. So let me conclude this that in case of merger and acquisition, if you are receiving more than one consideration like cash and shares, then we need to see whether cash is small. If yes, no CGT. If not, then we have to calculate CGT against the cash consideration.
and sometimes the mixed consideration involves the cash and the qualifying loan and in that case we have to see what would be the consequence so again the mixed consideration involve cash and loan and it involve cash plus loan so for the cash component the same rule which we have discussed above now what about the loan component so the treatment is that for loan a chargeable gain arises but it is conditional a chargeable gain is arises as if the bonds were cash but gain is not tax now it is not going to be tax now rather the gain is freezed for the time being like in rollover relief we have uh, already studied the concept of the delaying the gain so the gain is frozen until disposal of loan note so when you sold that loan note then ultimately you have to pay the previous gain as well now see the qualifying corporate bond qcb is exempt so when you subsequently sold that qcb it's exempt but that frozen gain is now taxable is taxable now so a part is taxable and a part is not taxable something is exempt and a part is taxable now moving forward in there is some stamp duty on the disposal of shares so how to deal with stamp duty so stamp duty tax and stamp duty reserve tax stamp duty is also uh, i mean applicable on transfer of land and also on shares and security so this in this case this is uh, payable by purchaser and on transfer of shares on transfer of shares and securities and the normal duty that we need to pay is the amount of duty is 0.5% of consideration payable against that shares if we need to round this off so round to nearest 5 pound but there is no charge if consideration is 1000 or less 
So this is a stem duty. And as far as the stem duty reserve tax is concerned, this is also the 0.5%, but it is rounded to the nearest pence. There are some exemption from stem duties as well. In some cases, there is no exam duty. That list you can check. On some things, it is applicable. On some item, it is not applicable. A brief concept of uh, stem duty, not that difficult. Now we have already discussed about uh, one relief in the last discussion. Let's talk about another relief associated with CGT, and that is very important called business asset disposal relief. That is. B A D R. First of all, condition when this relief is eligible, and then what are the consequences? How you get the relief? <coughs> so, first of all, on any qualifying asset, qualifying business disposal, if your disposal fall in qualifying disposal. For BADR, the consequence is gain of one million. There is only ten percent rate up to. So, suppose that, for example, you are selling one item, and that item is like eligible for. the business asset disposal relief so how what amount of tax is need to be payable we know that there are there are two rates applicable one is 10 percent another is 18 percent this is up to the first band available that is 7700 and the rest is applicable above is 18 percent this is the cgt rate but the benefit is that if you are eligible for badr then a reduced rate of 10% is applicable on up to 1 million gain. So this is a huge benefit. And if your gain is more than 1 million, then the excess will attract 18% or 28%, sorry, 20%. This is not 80. 18, it's 20, 20 or 28%. So the important thing is that the condition that which kind of disposal is eligible for qualifying business disposal. So we have three items that we can consider. If there is a disposal of these three items, either of these three items, then we can eligible for business asset disposal relief. So first one is when you disposed of the whole of the business or part of business a complete disposal or a partial disposal not a single asset the whole of the business or part of the business similarly the individual assets of the business which is now ceased if you are selling individual asset of a ceased business then it is also applicable. Third thing is very important that in the case of disposal of shares, now important thing is that there are so many disposal, not on every disposal we get the qualifying business asset disposal relief. So the condition is important. If someone is selling shares and want BADR, then number one condition is shares are in individual personal trading company the shares must belongs to individual personal trading company now what is the definition of personal trading company it means that person owns at least five percent shares if i have more than like five percent or more than five percent shares holding in any company then it is called the my 
personal trading company and i can get the benefit right but the second condition is that the individual must be employed individual is employee of the company either part time or full time so either of these three conditions are important if you are selling whole of the whole of the business part of the business or individual asset of the business that has been seized or a transfer or disposal of shares having two conditions and there is a claim date if you want to claim this then there is a claim date for 21 22 the claim must be made by 31st january 2024 total limit as i told you that total limit is 1 million so up to 1 million we can use this gain now suppose for example we have disposal and suppose we have disposal of two asset one having gain on one asset asset number 1 gain of suppose 200000 and we have another gain which is el eligible for badr and it's going to be 500000 and we need to find out the cgt the question is that we need to offset the annual exemption so from which value annual exemption and brought forward capital losses is to be offset so let's see how we can apply rate so one is uh, not eligible for bdr and another is eligible for bdr so we have to segregate these two things so the gain which is not eligible is 200000 and gain which is eligible is 500000 now we'll deduct annual exemption from this figure 12300 rather than from 500000 so as a result i have 500000 of qualifying gain and rest i have let me calculate 200000 minus 12300 so this gain has reduced to 18770 now i have to apply cgt this is basically taxable gain now as we know that we have a band which is restricted to 37700 but as this is eligible till 1 million so first of all we'll use this so for qualifying gain for qualifying gain the rate is only 10% 500000 multiplied by 10 so we have only 50000 and for non qualifying we have the remaining 187700 and now we have the higher rate and as a result we have 37540 and total cgt is 87540 so this is my cgt so this is how the application of the business asset disposal relief and the limit now as the total limit is 1 million so if you have used something in this like we have already used 500000 so the remaining value now 500000 so this is the lifetime limit if you utilize this 1 million then it is not again available it's for once in a life So this isn't just an overview of the BADR. So one that is uh, uh, the rollover relief. I have covered the rollover relief. 
and a brief overview of the business asset disposal relief. Now, one more important thing is sometimes we get some like gift relief, the holdover relief. The third one, the gift holdover relief. So it is applicable on lifetime gifts. It is applicable on sale of something, but at an undervalue sales and of qualifying asset. The condition is important. First, the eligibility that whether this attracts gift relief or not. Now, see if that relief is applicable, then ultimately, let's talk about first of all the gift. Let's talk about the gift. If one person is gifting, giving gift so as a result of gift the person who gave that gift is called donor and person who is receiving that gift called donee so from the donor's perspective and from the donee's point of view we need to calculate both first suppose the sale proceed is 200000 So as this is a gift, so we need to replace this sale proceed with the market value. So we'll calculate market value and the original cost from the donor's point of view. And as a result, this is the gain that we get at the time of gift but as this is relief so what we'll get we'll get gift relief against that means donor will get the gift relief and there is no cgt and from the donee's point of view the acquisition cost is market value of gift becomes the acquisition cost for donee and donee will deduct the gift relief out of it and that becomes the base cost so donee who is receiving this piece gift of shares will now use this base cost when donee will subsequently disposed of those shares suppose donee has disposed of these shares later on then sale proceed and donee will deduct the base cost rather than the original cost for doni the cost of shares is the base cost so this is when there is an entire gift of asset and what are the qualifying asset on which we can get these relief the list of qualifying asset The first one is yes. Right now we are revising only CGT, not IST. Uh, in the previous session we revised CGT, and now we are revised CGT for the remaining part. And in the next session we will practice some question on CGT. So as far as the list of the qualifying asset is concerned, we have uh, number one, asset used in the 
trade of donor asset used in the trade of number one the donor as sole trader or partnership or donors personal trading company usually we have a one question in section b comprising of cgt and iht and there might be a separate question as well or there might be some part question in section a as well second thing is unquoted shares gift of unquoted shares and securities of any trading company this is the second condition third one is the quoted shares and securities of donors personal trading company the definition is 5% shares the fourth condition is any asset where there is immediate ist charge now this this is basically connected with ist like for example in ist if we transfer anything as a gift to a trust then ist is applicable immediately so when ist is immediately applicable then on cgt you can get this kind of relief and similarly the last one is agricultural property has been gifted where apr which is a relief in ist is available so these are the condition need to memorize that in those cases we can get gift relief now as far as the sale at under value is concerned sometimes there is a disposal which is called sale at under value like for example uh, the market value of a item is 100000 and cost was 30000 but that asset has been disposed of at a price of 80000 which is below market value in this situation although there is a disposal but that disposal included one element of a kind of gift and which is what the difference between market value and selling price if the market value of one item is 100000 now how can you are selling this at a low price so there is an element of gift in this and that is the difference between market value and selling price 20000 so in that case some gain is taxable some gain is taxable immediately and some is you can get get gift relief on some following my example you can see here that uh, the difference between these two is immediate gain the difference between cost and selling price so from the donor's point of view you can see from the donor's point of view we'll calculate gain as market value and the original cost this is the same way and the gain is 70000 now there is a immediate tax which is the difference between cost and selling price so it is uh, 50000 right so let's write gain which is taxable 
which is the difference between selling price and uh, cost, which is 50,000. So out of 70,000, the 50,000 is immediately taxable. So this balancing figure is called gift relief. And the gift relief is 20,000 from the donor's point of view. Now, Doni, the cost for Doni is market value, which is 100,000. Deduct gift relief out of it. And the cost, which is the base cost for Doni, and this base cost is 80,000. And this 80,000 now needs to be used whenever Doni tries to dispose of the remaining item. So under the gift relief, there are two things. One is a 100% gift. Another is sale at under value and both must be of qualifying asset. And I've already told you that what is the definition of the qualifying asset. And sometimes you will not get 100% gift relief. The thing is that sometimes there is a restriction on gift relief. And what is the point? And there is a restriction on gift relief. One situation is when there is a non-business use. Because this is available on business assets. So if the asset that has been gifted is partly used for business purpose and partly used for private purpose, then the GR is only eligible for the business pur purpose. The non-business purpose is not eligible. Likewise, the second thing is that when you are selling shares or gifting shares in the Donors personal trading company. Shares in donors personal trading company. So if donor is making gift out of the personal trading company, whether quoted or unquoted, then you have to see whether that uh, business is holding some. non chargeable assets non chargeable or chargeable non business assets so in case of uh, gift of shares in donors personal trading company sometimes some gain is eligible and some gain is not eligible so the eligible part is how we can calculate how much is eligible for gr so that eligible part is find out total gain, the difference between cost and selling price. And that total gain is multiplied by market value of chargeable business assets. Those business assets which are chargeable divided by market value of all chargeable assets, not exempt. I'm talking about the chargeable assets. So donors personal trading company is having some chargeable assets. So you have to segregate the chargeable business assets and chargeable non-business assets. So what is the example of uh, chargeable asset? Chargeable assets are those assets which are not exempt. Are called chargeable assets. And what about the chargeable business asset and chargeable non-business asset? So it's CBA, chargeable business asset, and chargeable non-business asset. Now suppose, for example, think about investment. Investment is eligible as a chargeable asset 
बट इन्वेस्टमेंट इज अ चार्जेबल नॉन बिजनेस एसेट तो इफ इन डोनर्स पर्सनल ट्रेडिंग कंपनी इफ देर आर सम चार्जेबल नॉन बिजनेस एसेट देन द गेन इज रिस्ट्रिक्टेड and sometime it is also a possibility that uh, the gr is available as well as the badr is also available then you have to plan that whether you are interested in badr and you don't want to get uh, the gift relief or you want to get gift relief depending on that how you are getting these kind of benefits